The visionary creator of SpaceX and Tesla, Elon Musk, dreams to bring solar power to the masses, people to Mars, and maybe even retire there himself. Musk's dreams to colonize Mars will only come true once the red planet is filled with a considerable amount of manpower, and that is only possible with frequent and recurring trips to Mars. The vehicle of choice for this mission is the magnificent Starship. With dreams of Mars on the minds of both NASA and Elon Musk, long-distance crewed missions through space are coming. But you might be surprised to learn that modern rockets do not go all that much faster than the rockets of the past. Starship, as it is known, is a fully reusable transport system capable of carrying up to 100 people to the Red Planet. The duration of each trip to Mars would take up to 9 months. This seems like an insanely huge amount of time to spend in space, an environment that will cause irreparable damage to the human body. The obvious solution to this is to lessen the travel time by increasing the speed of the Starship spacecraft. The Starship is powered by an insane Raptor engine, which is a reusable Metalox stage combustion engine. Though this engine is an invention of its own, we ask ourselves whether a different power source would make the SpaceX Starship even more efficient. That might just be the case, as in this video we will discuss how the nuclear-powered Starship would shorten the journey to Mars. But before we dive further into this, make sure to press the subscribe button and do not forget to hit the bell icon to never miss out on any of our latest space niche videos. By 2035, NASA wants to land humans on Mars, but reaching the red planet will be a mammoth feat. Colder than Antarctica, with little to no oxygen, Mars is a hostile environment. The longer it takes astronauts to get there, and the longer they stay, the more they are at risk. This is why scientists are looking at ways to reduce trip time. Seattle-based company Ultrasafe Nuclear Technologies, USNC Tech, has proposed a solution, a nuclear thermal propulsion engine that could get humans to Mars in just three months. Currently, the shortest possible trip for an unmanned spacecraft is seven months, but a crewed mission is expected to take at least nine months. The Starship spacecraft and Super Heavy rocket will collectively make the voyage to Mars. As it ascends from the launch pad, the combined Starship system will begin to pitch over towards the intended orbit. When the upper stage separates in space, the Super Heavy rocket will flip over while falling back towards Earth. As it descends, Super Heavy will deploy steel structures called grid fins, shaped a bit like a potato waffle, from the sides of the booster. These will help steer the rocket ship back towards its launch pad, so it can be flown again. The Starship is a chemical rocket, which means that it burns chemical fuel to produce the thrust necessary for the flight. Another way to produce this thrust would be to use nuclear propulsion systems. Most rockets today are powered by chemical engines. These could get you to Mars, but it would take a long time. NASA wants a way to get there faster, mainly to minimize the crew's time in outer space. This would reduce their exposure to space radiation, which can cause health problems, including radiation sickness, increased lifetime risk of cancer, central nervous system effects, and degenerative diseases. It would also decrease the overall risk of the mission, as the longer you're out there, the more time there is for stuff to go wrong. To date, the longest continuous amount of time a human has spent in space is 437 days, and there is no doubt in the fact that inhabiting Mars would take a lot longer than that. That is why the space agency is looking to develop nuclear-powered rockets. The trip must be as fast as possible, but going quickly takes fuel. For even the most basic human trip to Mars, it is believed that around a thousand tons of propellant would be necessary. Nuclear power could allow the mission to be completed with less fuel in a shorter amount of time. Because of the extra thrust provided by nuclear rocket motors, astronauts would be able to take a shortcut back to Earth by spiraling around the Sun and Venus. Nuclear thermal propulsion involves shooting hydrogen gas through the core of a specifically designed nuclear reactor. The hydrogen would cause the reactor to heat up, which in turn would make the hydrogen expand out of the nozzle, causing thrust. An NTP system uses a rocket reactor to generate heat from a uranium fuel. That thermal energy heats a liquid propellant, usually liquid hydrogen, which expands into a gas and is shot out the back end, producing thrust. NTP rockets produce twice the amount of thrust per unit of propellant than a chemical system. An additional advantage of a nuclear thermal rocket is that it could travel directly between planets without gravity assistance at least twice as fast as the chemical rocket could, cutting the transit time between planets. For example, 
A trip to Mars using chemical rockets would take nine months. Nuclear rockets could take the same trip in as little as five months. Unlike a chemical rocket, the propellant gas for a nuclear thermal rocket can be freely chosen because in this case, a chemical reaction does not produce heat or gas. The propellant gas flows through the core from a storage tank. The nuclear reactions from the reactor core heat the propellant gas. However, one of the main challenges for building an NTP engine is finding a uranium fuel that can withstand the blistering temperatures inside a nuclear thermal engine. Another promising scheme for nuclear space propulsion is to use the heat produced by a fission reactor to produce electricity. Electricity is produced by using a thermoelectric element or a heat engine to drive an electrical generator, as is done in nuclear power plants. The electricity is then used to accelerate ions to high speeds. In this case, the ions are the propellant gas. This scheme, called nuclear electric propulsion, can reach much higher exhaust velocities than are possible with nuclear thermal propulsion, but at lower thrust. Nuclear electric propulsion builds on NASA's working maturing solar electric propulsion thrusters and systems for Artemis, as well as the development of fission power for the lunar surface. Significant investment has also been made in relevant fuel and reactor technologies for small terrestrial reactors that could be adapted to space reactors to power electric propulsion. The US government's aim to establish a fuel fabrication capability has a range of applications, including nuclear propulsion and fission surface power. Other nuclear rocket schemes studied over the years include propelling a rocket with a sufficient atomic bomb explosions or nuclear fusion. Matter-antimatter reactions could be considered, although a method to produce significant amounts of the second half of the fuel, the antimatter, needs development. These rockets could have much higher thrusts and specific impulses than those of a nuclear thermal rocket. To date, however, researchers have only built and tested nuclear thermal propulsion engines. One eco-friendly method to reduce travel time would be to use a solar sail. Solar sails are a method of spacecraft propulsion using radiation pressure exerted by sunlight on large mirrors. In space, things take a different turn. The laws of physics state that every action must have an equal and opposite reaction. So when photons from the sun bounce off a spaceship, the ship is propelled ever so slightly in a direction away from the sun. With a single photon, the change is negligible, but a large collection of them can provide significant thrust. Place a large flat mirror-like sheet in front of the spacecraft and the sun's power will push it forward. The material must also be strong and gossamer thin in order to catch and control the sunlight. Solar sails can tack like regular sails to travel in many directions. According to the Planetary Society, the technology has an advantage over the propulsion methods because a ship does not need to carry fuel wherever it goes, instead relying on the freely available light of stars. What method should Elon Musk adapt to scale down the lengthy journey to Mars? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. Congrats on having such a great attention span. We have come to the end of the video. Thank you for watching and I hope you've enjoyed. Make sure to like and subscribe for similar content. Until we meet next time.